welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Garwin, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and all on other social media platforms and Ravelry by these handles. And we also have Ravelry Group, um, which is called New Leaf Podcast Group, and you can chat about all things nitty crochet podcasty over there i welcome all of you guys in my little podcast group so can you believe it's the 50th episode already um well i've been podcasting in english for two years so and being a bi-weekly podcast episode 50 in two years yeah sounds reasonable <laughs> it sounds consistent um yeah my pot anniversary is coming up in april i think i think it's april yeah but it doesn't really matter anyway so because it's the 50th episode i'm going to be hosting a giveaway and you can enter the giveaway in my ravelry group i will open a little thread for it which will say 50th episode or episode 50 giveaway and I will be giving away a skein, yes, of yarn, <laughs> of Nicole C. Mendes self-striping sock yarn, which is amazing. Uh, I don't know if you know the Little Red Riding Hood colorway uh, that I knit my Christmas socks out of, and also Amy uh, of Stranded Dye Works knit her Christmas socks uh, out of Nicole C. Mendes yarn last year. And yes, so this is uh, one of her other one of her other colorways called Poppy. It's on our soft sock base, which is 80% merino, 20% polyamide. It doesn't say super wash, so just be mindful of that to wash these socks by hand. I always wash my socks by hand, so yeah. But Nicole has uh, donated this lovely, lovely skein, and I will be giving it away uh, in this giveaway. And I'll also be donating one uh, copy of my Striped and Stranded Socks pattern, which is perfect for self-striping yarns. Uh, you'll need a contrast skein with this, so maybe a dark purple or uh, yeah, dark blue will do, or dark green, yeah. As long as the contrast is enough, then you can create a Striped and Stranded Socks um, pair of socks with these. Um, I'm going to pop in a picture right here of uh, my striped and stranded socks. So you can see it uses cell striping yarn and then a contrast colorway to, you know, just create color work, uh, stranded color work patterns. And it's so, so much fun. Um, yes, so I'll be giving away a skin of this. So be sure to go over to my Ravelry group and enter the giveaway. And I think, I guess I will do a little question but I'll think of that later when I uh, when I'm open the thread so yeah so be sure to check that out um, another thing about the Ravelry group because uh, I frequently host cows in there so be it crochet alongs or knit alongs uh, or make alongs um, I am hosting two of them at the moment well one is finished so I'm still hosting one which is the um, yarn folk along um, so be sure to check that out, but the one that is finished is the Chevrainbow Blanket Crochet Along. And if you don't know, my Chevrainbow Blanket pattern is a crochet blanket pattern uh, with chevrons and a kind of rainbow um, color scheme, color order, sequence. Yeah. And anyway, I have just about finished my second shiv rainbow blanket and it's huge. I'm using the Escapey Stone Washed XL for this. <laughs> and I'm draping it all over myself right now. So this is my shiv rainbow XL blanket. I feel like a ghost, a very colorful ghost, but still. <laughs> and since last time I have added on this portion, yeah, I think it was about here. So I've added this and these were the last colors to add. 
and I love them so much. Now all that is left for me to do is add the fringe. Uh, I have just a couple meters left of each color and I will be adding fringe and so these yarn ends you don't have to weave them in um, because they will be incorporated into the fringe so how fun is that so you don't have to weave in any ends I thought it was so funny because I I was writing up the PDF pattern for this so the pattern is on my blog for free but if you want a nice printable PDF um, and support me as a designer you can also buy the uh, PDF uh, I think it's for under two euros. I think it's one or one euro fifty. Um, and when I was writing that, um, I just automatically in the materials I put in darning needle. But then I figured that you don't need a darning needle for this project because there's no sewing. <laughs> uh, yes, that was a revelation. So I still need to weave in the ends. So technically. I haven't finished my Shiv Rainbow blanket in time, but I did finish crocheting the Shiv Rainbow blanket on February the 1st, which was the last day of the crochet along. So technically, no, I, I didn't finish it in time, but <laughs> yeah, but at least I finished the crocheting part. Yeah, so I'm really, really happy with this one. It is huge. So um, I think it was one meter, 30 wide and 1 meter 60 or 70 long whereas the normal shift rainbow blanket the original one is 113 wide and 135 long so it's 30 to 40 centimeters longer which is quite a difference <laughs> and it's it's thicker as well because this one is Oh, I don't know the weight. Is it Aaron? I'm always confusing this. So it, it might be maybe worst weight, maybe Aaron weight. The original is DK weight. So um, yeah, it just feels so much more substantial, and I think this one will get a lot of use um, in the house. So really, really happy with this. So yes, the crochet long is finished. Um, but I did really, really enjoy it, and I love that so many people joined in and are still making wonderful blankets, and, um, some people even made multiple blankets, like Ellie, she's finished two blankets already, and she's planning, she's planning on knitting more, uh, crocheting more, um, yeah, and also on Instagram I saw, well, I don't know her name, but her Instagram handle is Virkavajedag. I thought, uh, I think, and uh, she has crocheted two as well in her own um, uh, color sequences and I, I just love that. I love when people just get creative with my patterns and uh, yeah, it's it's so, so nice. And that's, that's the main thing that I love about crochet alongs, just, uh, just seeing so many beautiful projects all in one place and yeah, so definitely go and browse the hashtag Shivrainbow <laughs> Cow on Instagram or Shivrainbow Blanket uh, if you would like to see all those beautiful blankets. It's, it's, uh, it just fills me with so much joy. And I'm thinking of hosting another cow, but. I think for the moment one is enough. So the the cal or mal that I'm still hosting is the Scapius yarn folk along, which is an along for uh, do I have it here? Yes, for the Scapius yarn folk magazine, and I am making the Olga cardigan by Susan Walsh, and yeah, I'm just inviting everyone to make along with me uh it's very very casual very relaxed there's no deadline so it's just a thread where you can just share your progress and 
yeah, and it's just been really nice. There hasn't been that much much activity yet, and I haven't been able to be that present in the group, but, you know, as I said, it's very casual, and I'm always super grateful if people are tuning in, and, um, for example, uh, Tracy, uh, Tracy uh, was also making an Olga cardigan, and, um, uh, she was concerned that the pattern wouldn't have the, um, w wouldn't go up to the size that she needed, and, um, so, I suggested to her that she also use the Whirlette, which I'm also using for this pattern. It's a th uh, just a thicker yarn uh, than that's recommended in the pattern, so, you know, you get a larger size. And um, turns out that she has, you know, cast it on, or whatever you say with crochet, and she has already finished it, and it's so beautiful. She made it in this lovely pink color, and it's so, so beautiful. And uh, now I cannot wait to finish mine, even though I haven't had any time to work on it in the last two weeks. <sighs> yes, but I cannot wait. And just, yeah, seeing all of the projects just fills me with so much inspiration and joy. And yeah, and I'm so grateful for people just joining in, chatting along. And yes, please, please come over to the Ravelry group and see all those beautiful projects and cheer them on or start or start your own project. And I have another make along to talk about, although it's not me hosting it. It's uh, my lovely friend Nerissa who is hosting the Rain Boom Cal, uh, Mal, sorry, in the uh, Scapius Facebook group. Uh, so Scapius is a Dutch yarn company and so I was using their yarn for this Shiv Rainbow blanket and Arissa has also used the uh, rainbow color pack uh, that has Scapius stone washed and river washed and so I used additional yarn to make this blanket because a blanket takes a lot of yarn but uh, Nerissa was very smart and she used the pack only to uh, crochet this amazing rainbow shawl so I'm gonna put a bit put in a picture right here so it's this amazing rainbow shawl and um, you only need the color pack for this and um, if I'm correct there are two different color packs for the regular weight one has 50 colors, which is the one I used, and one has 58 colors because uh, there were some other colors that were introduced after the first pack came out. And uh, Nerissa has written up a pattern which is for free on her blog, but again, if you want to support her as a designer, you can uh, buy her paid PDF. Um, that's just very easy printable. And... Um, She's written up the pattern for the 50 ball pack and for the 58 ball pack and it's just so amazing. Um, it started February the 1st. I believe it's just going on for this month, maybe also for the next month. I'm not sure about that. I will put it on the screen right now. So hop on over to Scapius Facebook group. They have two groups. One is for uh, the Dutch people because it's a Dutch yarn brand, so they have a Dutch group, and uh, the second is an international group, so, uh, you know, you can have your conversations in English or whatever. So, um, so hop on over to those groups uh, if you are um, interested in joining this make-along, and be sure to hop on over to Nerissa's website as well, which is Miss Nerissa, um, and grab that amazing pattern. So that was all of the mouths and cows and everything content. Um, and for the rest of this episode, I actually wanted to talk about all of my whips. <laughs> I counted them again. I have 15 whips. Yeah. I also have two FOs. No, wait, one new FO since last time. So that's something, but that was such a quick knit that it was never on my whip list. So it doesn't actually feel like progress because I had 15 whips then, I have 15 whips now, but I have one FO. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so let me start with that first. So last week I already showed you the hat that I made with Scapius Namaste. 
which is this one. And using the same colors, I also made this one. So it uses the colors in, um, I don't want to say reverse, but in different order. So the red and blue are uh, switched, but the white is the same. Yeah. So this one is for a kind of like a 55 centimeter circumference head. So it's, you know, female head sized, but you know, my dad has a small head as well. So he could probably wear it as well. Uh, or, you know, um, men could also wear it but then you know this really like hipster hipster like just <laughs> i don't know how to do it but just you know they just put a head put a hat on their head and just let it stay up like that but uh yeah so you could do that or you could knit the bigger version i've added a whole pattern repeat and this is probably for 60 centimeter circumference head probably and but you know i could wear it as a slouchy head hat so i have two options the smaller one and the big one so this is for a 55 circumference head and this is for a 60 circumference head did i say 55 for this one or something else because i mean 55 yeah so pattern is coming up very, very soon, probably uh, before the end of the month, uh, which is February. <laughs> and um, I'll be doing a photo shoot this weekend. It was supposed to be last weekend, but then one of my models got sick. <laughs> so yeah, I'll hopefully be shooting that this weekend. Uh, so that's what I finished, um, as I said, out of Scapies Namaste, and I used one ball of each color, so that's three balls for both of these hats, meaning I can knit two hats out of three balls. So that's pretty good, and uh, it's 50% wool, 50% acrylic, um, so it's nice and warm and soft. Yes, and I will put pom-poms on these hats. I haven't gotten around to doing that yet, but I probably will do so today or tomorrow. Right, so that was my only FO. Um, and so now the whips. And I won't talk at length about each whip because that would take a lot of time. So some of them I'm gonna show you really quickly, mostly the ones that I'm totally fed up with, <laughs> um, and other ones I will talk a bit more about. So the first one is the one that's still on my lap, the Shivrainbo Blanket. So not gonna be talking about this because I already talked about it, so I'm gonna put on the fringe sometime, but it's not a priority right now so yeah so that is my first whip so i'm just gonna cross that off okay second whip which is also still an active project living in my bed of roses bag is the olga cardigan so this i am making for the escapees folk along um and so i haven't progressed at all since the last episode i even left the stitch markers in that i put on it to showcase it um yeah so it's a cardigan crochet cardigan with lots of lace lots of filet crochet and there are motifs um from the front to the back then there's a filet panel back and the other side and you can see I still have to add the motives here and then uh, I still need to do the front edging and the hem edging so yeah but again this is not a priority right now because uh, my pr my priorities are always my own patterns because I need to finish those and get the pattern published so this one is just for fun 
Uh, yeah, but I hope to be working on that soon again. Probably not in the next couple of weeks, but hopefully soon. One of my more recent cassons is in this bag, which is by Mama Flea. Uh, which I won in a giveaway uh, sometime last year, are the... Uh, I haven't given these a name. Socks. They're just socks that I'm making for my friend. Um, and I have an interesting story about these. Because this sock has been cut into, it has been split in half, in two pieces, and then put back together again. Yes. Um, so I'm knitting this for a friend and uh, I had finished the first sock and then she came over. She tried it on and I think I was talking about this last time or maybe in the Patreon video. I think in a Patreon video. So she came over and she tried it on and she said, oh yeah, it fits amazing. And then, but I saw the heel just slipping under her foot. And I said, no, it's too small, it's too small, I have to redo it. She said, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So I made her think that I wasn't going to do anything about it. But I totally was. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, leave this. Um, so what I did, because the, the foot was too small, and ha I had already finished the entire sock, and it was toe up. So... Technically, and I will talk some more about this in the tutorial video that I have filmed, uh, which will go up on my Patreon page. So you have two ways of making a foot larger. It's uh, either um, putting in a needle here, ripping back the toe, and then knitting a bit, and then decreasing for the toe. So that's the first method. But I didn't want to do that because this, toes, uh, this sock is toe up, the other one is as well, and you can see the difference between a toe up or cuff down sock, so I didn't want to do that. Second option, you cut um, in the foot after putting in a needle underneath and above. Uh, so you rip back, or you rip one round, so it's separated, then you knit on one side, and then graft it together again. And that's what I did. And seriously, it wasn't that hard. Uh, I think I spent about two hours on it, including filming it and stuff, so uh, it shouldn't take you as long as it did me. But, um... Do you see it? I can't, especially not in this patterned yarn. I think it is this red stripe or this blue stripe. I don't know. Somewhere here. Um, yeah, so that was really, really nice. And um, so the second sock I had just knit up to here. So I'm just going to rip back and um, because there are some gusset increases here. So I'm gonna rip back till before the gusset increases, knit a couple rows more, and then do the gusset, gusset, gusset increases. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, and then hopefully they will fit a whole lot better. And so I've recorded this sock surgery video for my Patreon page, um, which is a website, so Patreon is a website that is basically a support system for creators and um, you can make your page and then uh, if your supporters want to support you, they can do so um, for an X fee per month. So um, you can support me starting from $2 a month, which is less than two euro. Um, and from $5 a month, uh, you get access to all of these exclusive tutorial videos, including this tutorial video I just talked about, which will be available hopefully next week, and lots more. So if you're interested, be sure to check it out. And if you haven't seen any tutorials from me yet, then you can also check out some free ones. Here on YouTube, I have a sock tutorial video, which is my simple toe up socks tutorial. I have an afterthought heel tutorial, um, 
which I've heard is really, really helpful. Thank you all so much for your lovely feedback. Um, there's a tutorial on how to do the fringe for your Shiver Rainbow blanket. So yeah, just be sure to check it out. And if you like it, you can hop over to my Patreon page for more. So yes, these socks are my third whip. Then more socks. Okay, this one uh, is the third version of my striped and stranded socks, which I cast on in October and haven't worked on since. But yeah, so this is an example of the striped and stranded socks pattern, which you can do, which you can knit with self striping yarn. This is a version where I've used the same pattern over and over. And this is Regia a Pear Effect, which gives really wide stripes. So I thought it would be really nice because most self-striping yarns have a shorter, um, narrower stripes. So yeah, so this one is a nice variation on that. Yeah, so that was whip number four. And another pair of socks is in the same bag. And Mayan, I know you will recognize this one. <laughs> it's the Christmas tree socks, yes. Or sock. I've only I'm only on the first sock. I love these so so much, but for some reason I cannot bring myself to knit on them. But I will. No worries, these will get finished this year. I'm making a vow to finish these socks by the end of the year. I'm not saying by Christmas, I'm saying by the end of the year, but hopefully before Christmas. <laughs> these were a Christmas cast on in 2016. So they are over two years old now. These are my first color work socks. And the color work here is, well, it's good enough. It's good enough. But, um, yeah. But when I picked them up again and looked at them, I was like, oh, should I just frog these completely? But then, you know, a, I don't want to do the extra work, and B, I think it would be nice to see the progress in my color work knitting, if that makes sense. So, yeah. But I like these so much. The pattern is O Denneboom, which is O Christmas Tree, by René Kies, who is a Dutch pattern designer of mostly socks, I believe, but she she uh, designs amazing patterns. Uh, so the Christmas tree one is uh, one of them. And the sole looks like this. Uh, the yarn is um, Hedgehog Fibers in the Where's My Bike colorway, which was an exclusive colorway for Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam. This was, I think, my first first kind of splurge sock yarn because it's like 25 or 28 euros a skein. It's like crazy expensive. Um, well, at least it was for me at the time. And the green one is Wool Metfeave in Avocado. And I love this green. You can see it more on the heel here. I've done a garter heel, um, which was really nice. I just wanted to give it a try. Uh, yeah, so I have knit a little bit on this last year. Uh, only like the heel, I think. Yeah, but I'm, I'm over the heel now. So I'm over the, you know, tedious part. I just have to get this done. But it's only the first sock, so yeah. But can you imagine that when I started this, I did not even have proper sock needles. When I started this, I had these horrible bamboo DPNs 
uh, from Tiger, not even a knitting store, just from Tiger. Um, because they were just a euro and I was starting out. So I can't believe that I used those one euro needles for a 25 euro yarn. For, and that was only one of them. So it was, uh, <laughs> it's so funny to me, like, that the most expensive yarn that I had bought till then that I'm using for socks. But anyway. I will finish these this year, but don't give me any grief if I don't, seriously. I'm done feeling bad about this. <laughs> uh, all right, that was whip number five. Whip number six is my bamboo top, which is probably one of my oldest whips. This one I started back in 2014. When I was traveling in China with my boyfriend and um, uh, we were in Chongqing and uh, there was this yarn shop and of course I had to get something so I got this whole box of bamboo yarn which is super super soft and I went on Ravelry because I did have a mini laptop with me at the time um, and this pattern is by Piero Yarns or Gossio, Gossio. I was a huge fan of their uh, patterns um, because of the Japanese style and uh, just so pretty. And I just started making motifs and um, because we were in China for two months, yeah. In China and Hong Kong for two months together and then uh, two weeks in Tokyo um, yeah so I we were traveling for a long time and uh, I did pretty much all of this during our trip just crocheting a motive at a time um, but then when I got back I just kind of lost interest um, because you know you're there in Asia and the fashion sense there is so well it's so different but I like it so much it's like uh, the cutest things ever like uh, bunny print pajamas or or not even pajamas just bunny print sweaters or pants or whatever just just wear cute stuff out in the open and back then you know you know <laughs> bubblegum pink top just seemed like you know fine but then when I got back to the Netherlands just it seemed like it would be too girly and you know whenever I wear something like this people don't take me seriously they often don't take me seriously but you know that hasn't stopped me from wearing pink like I'm wearing pink on pink with bicycle print but I just thought it would be too much and I just kind of lost interest. Um, yes, I'm, I'm just not sure what to do with it. I might, um, because this is the neck, neckline, neck hole, neck hole, neckline. Um, I think I might just sew that closed or remove these motifs but I have sewn in all of the ends already except for these so that kind of hurts and I thought of just making a pillow cover but yeah I just I just don't know because I don't want to not finish it and I don't want to frog it completely because it does have memories of that trip but I also don't want to finish the top because even if I would have the confidence to wear it, I don't think it's actually my style anymore. Or I might, I don't know. I really don't know. If you have any suggestions, like 
I might still finish this as a top, but with like a plain knit background maybe? Or plain crochet could be, yeah. Yeah, let me know. Let me know if you have any ideas. Whip number seven. Is it an envelope? I don't know. I guess I need more project bags. Um, it's also a top that I started probably in 2017. So it's a top slash shawl, uh, supposed to be. Wait, I'll just show you the pattern picture. Right. So it can be a top like this, um, or like this, or, or like a shawl, like this. Um, but, and I made this really quickly, this is like one day or two days, but then I kind of lost interest because it's so holy, and that's not really my style. I do like the yarn, but I think I just want to knit with it. I don't know. So I have three balls of this, which is Rico Creative Melange. It's uh, 260 meters on 50 grams. Uh, it's a cotton and polyester mix. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not gonna finish this top. I know that I'm not gonna wear it. Um, you know, but I bought it because it looked fun and it is fun, it is really fun to make, but I just don't see myself using it. Yeah. And then there was also this ball, which I think is used for the edging. Yeah, so I might just give this away or something. Or use it for something else. But these, I kind of like these. I kind of like the, the variation. Are these two different colors? Looks, it looks like, like these are the same. This one, I think it's the same actually. Yeah, it's the same colorway. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, so it looks fun, but I am going to frog this. So this is one that I'm 100% sure that I'm going to frog. Um, but I don't know what I'm gonna make instead. I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. For lace cotton, but I don't want any holy stuff. Yeah. I think I need one of these um, knit-alongs or make-alongs that uh, Caitlin from the Bull Jewel podcast hosted last year, I think. It was... It was just a make-along where you either finish whips or frog them. And frogging them also counted as an entry for... Um, for that make along. And I think I need one of those to motivate me. <laughs> Whip number eight is a blanket in a fruit bowl. <laughs> this uh, is made from recycled uh, t-shirt yarn. This was an H&M sweater. It is now a baby blanket. Um, and look at this hook. It has glitters in it. From Addie. Really, really like that hook. Uh, so, this is a crochet blanket. And I just needed a quick project. Um, no, not a quick project. I needed a mindless project. So, yeah. So, I started this blanket. It's my own pattern. Um, there is this pattern on my website, which is called Filet Flower uh, Crochet or Filet Flower Square, which is a pattern for this square. And then for this blanket, I um, I decided to knit them, uh, crochet them all at the same time. I mean, to crochet a row, just adding one chain stitch in between. And I'm also adding 
chain spaces here or is it just working in the back loop? I'm doing something there. Can't even remember. <laughs> this was such a long time ago. I think this was also 2016 or 17. Don't know. I think 2017. I was making this when I uh, was uh, exhibiting at some um, um, just craft show here in uh, in the southern part of the Netherlands. And Regina from Herbstblatt Regina uh, drove all the way here to see me. And I was working on this blanket that day. Um, so yeah, it's uh, filled with happy memories. So I don't want to frog this. I'm going to finish it and probably give it away to the first baby I see. <laughs> probably, probably. I don't know. Yeah, but... Oh, I think actually... Yeah, it was 2016. Because... No. No, 2017, <laughs> because I think this was featured in my second podcast episode ever. I think, because I know I have one podcast episode called The Pink Tower, and I had literally a tower of yarn cakes of this yarn. So, yeah, if you want to check it out, go and see episode number two, The Pink Tower. <laughs> yeah. So that was 2017, yeah. All right, now for whip number nine, which was a very ambitious one. Uh, I wanted to make a rug. Can you imagine a rug? And I wanted to make it kind of log cabin style. I have completed two squares, I think. I am using... Um, Lead lopey, or yeah, I think it's lead lopey. It's not our Ha! I have a yarn. <laughs> I have a crochet hook in here. I was. I couldn't find that one, so yeah, not putting it back in the bag. Yeah. So I'm using lead lopey, and it's looking very wonky. It's just not looking the way that I wanted it to look. And I know I could probably fix that with blocking and I know it probably would felt a little bit and it would look totally different but I'm just not enjoying this project as I would have hoped so yeah I thought to create this log cabin a rug for my living room because I think it needs a rug and rugs are expensive so, of course, then I thought, oh, I'm going to spend 300 hours making my own rug. So, this is another project that is going to be frogged. And I'm thinking to knit a um, sweater for my boyfriend in this yarn. Or a cardigan. Probably a cardigan, because I want to steek. And I think this would be too scratchy. Oh my god, there's even a lip balm in here that I had lost. <laughs> Seriously. I need to check out these old project bags. So yes, I'm probably going to knit a sweater from this or a cardigan. Uh, because I really like this yarn. It's really toothy and I think it would be fun for my first steaking project. But yeah, that is whip number nine. Probably getting frogged. Whip number 10 is my granny coat in my granny bag. Again, another crochet whip. How many of these are crochet? I must have a count later. So I think I talked about this a couple of episodes ago. I think so. Uh, so a granny coat. I have a lot of sunburst granny squares in here. Um, they are meant to be sewn up into a coat or in a cardigan. And I've been working on this for several years. <laughs> Meaning I've started it several years ago and haven't worked on it since. I have dug this out for granny square day last year. But I didn't actually work on it. so. 
It's not on my priority list, but it is a really fun project and I want to finish it because I do want that crazy granny square coat that I can wear to yarn festivals and probably nowhere else or maybe around the house. But yeah, I think that is what made me lose motivation because I wanted to make more items that I could actually wear. So yeah, I mean, I want this to be a kind of educative process, I guess, to kind of see, okay, why am I not working on this anymore? Um, and seeing if it's something that I can change for the future. So uh, these are colors that I like, but not colors that I necessarily wear. So that's why I think I wouldn't wear this on a day-to-day -day basis. So, or it might just be my home uniform. <laughs> but as I said last time, I'm, I'm kind of done with making things just for indoor use. I think that's kind of sad. Uh, because I want to show what I make. Yeah, so this one will eventually get done, but probably not this year. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Probably not this year. Um, now for a project that is very nearly finished, that was actually finished last night, and I'm just going to knit half of this round so I can show you properly. So I had actually finished it last night, but I thought the sleeves were just a tad too short, so I ripped out the cast off and um, making the sleeve a little bit longer. Um, this is my pink sweater, which, which is going to be a free pattern on my blog, probably somewhere in March or April. Just keeping it real because I haven't finished the pattern yet, although I've come a long, long way. And um, I still need to find testers for this. Yeah, but I'm really excited about this. This is actually the first time I'm actually showing this on a podcast. I've only shown this on my Patreon page. Um, yeah. So it, it has sleeves. The sleeve still has to be ripped out. So this, uh, the um, second one has some more decreases here because it was a little bit too bell sleeved and has a um, eye card cast off. I really like it. It's gonna be my pink sweater. Pink meaning the opposite of the blues. Uh, meaning sad feeling. So this is going to be the most wonderful feeling you ever have. Um, and it's heavily inspired by the song Pink by Janelle Monae, uh, which is basically female empowerment. So yeah, this sweater is packed with a lot of positive energy for me. Um, the neckband is going to be Fold it over because I think that looks really cute. It will probably be finished this weekend and I will put out a call for testers. Um, I have a tester group on Facebook which is called the Carmen Jorgsen Tester Group and I have revamped it a little bit um, because I, uh, I found out that you can um, have a little questionnaire at the beginning um, so when you when you click join group then you you get this short question list like uh, are you an intermediate advanced or beginner knitter crochet and um, are you willing to make a swatch you know just stuff like this so just three short questions and uh, then I will add you to the group and you can see all of the things that are open for testing. Um, so I will put out a call for testers probably next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, and also, because this is what I'm really struggling with still. Um, okay, so I'm still learning 
pattern grading and so making a sweater pattern in different sizes and I've done I've written this pattern for XS to XXL um, but how do you calculate the yarn quantities like how does anybody how does how <laughs> uh, I think I don't even recall how much yarn I bought for this sweater so I don't even know. So if anybody knows, let me know. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is project number 11. I'm probably getting finished sometime this weekend. Whip number 11, a very similar one, which is my no frills sweater from Petite Knit. So the one I just showed you is also a merino and mohair knit, although I'm using, um, <coughs> sorry uh six millimeter needles for that one um because it's um heavier yarn weight and this one i'm using four millimeter don't know what that is in u.s sizes so yeah i am loving this so the difference is that this is top down the other one is bottom up and drop shoulder this is going to be raglan sleeved so it just i just don't want anybody thinking that i'm copying the no frill sweater uh because i'm not i mean i'm holding i am holding merino together with mohair but i've done that before i mean it's i just you know it's i think it's my biggest fear that as a pattern designer that someone thinks that I'm copying stuff or that I'm subconsciously copying stuff but this is a totally different pattern so I'm not taking anything of this pattern for my own pattern just just know that <laughs> uh, so this is a no frill sweater by Petite Knit uh, so it's a top-down Raclan sweater with one by one rib neck and I am using Debbie Bliss find on a gold tweed and <clears throat> and um, stranded dye works mohair in the meddlesome colorway which is awesome it's just so lovely I have the swatch right here this was before I knew that I actually needed to do swatch in the round I did do swatch in the round but I frogged that and used the yarn for this so but you can see the colors on here, it's so beautiful. And as uh, Kyla from Arctos Knit, she said on my Instagram post, it looks like watercolor. It totally does. So pretty. So yeah, this is one of the projects I really want to finish this year. This might even become my Edinburgh sweater. I don't know. I will probably wear the pink sweater to Edinburgh as well. Maybe I'll bring this as my Edinburgh project. I might. I might bring all of my projects. We're traveling by car. I can bring a lot and I can bring a lot back. <laughs> I'm super excited for that. Uh, yes, so project number 12, no frills sweater. Project number 13, coasters. Not the most exciting project ever. Uh, this was a free pattern on my blog. Um, and I have finished four coasters. Let me show you up close. They have a cool diamond pattern. It's a slip stitch pattern. Or not slip stitch, but yeah, I think slip stitch. But anyway, it's a cool diamond shape pattern. Free pattern on my blog. They're called the Diamond Coasters. Knit with a linen yarn, so it's an awesome texture. You can even make a bigger one and use it as a washcloth because linen feels great on your skin and it softens up greatly when washed but I wanted to knit five or six coasters and yeah this is my whip seriously uh, and where's the other needle I only have one needle <laughs> anyway yeah so that's project number 13. 
technically I could finish this in one evening. It has been on the needles for two years, I just couldn't be bothered. And then, the last one I'll be able to show you, because whip number 15 is a secret commission that is also currently being tested, so yeah, I won't tell you any more about that. Uh, so whip number 14 is a whip that, well, I'm just, I'm in the process of making a blanket, but I'm making them just one square at a time that I'm knitting from either hand spun yarn or souvenir yarn. And I've shown you these a couple of episodes ago. ago. Um, so I've knit these from hand spun. This is in garter stitch. This is in stockinette. And then I've knit another one in stockinette from some Noro yarn, which was a uh, ja Japan uh, souvenir from four years ago. Um, yeah, so I'm just knitting blankets. <laughs> I'm knitting squares with uh, some yarn that I won't be using for anything else um, because I just don't really know what to use hand spun for. Except now Andrea Maori has come out with all her shift patterns. The shifty sweater, which is definitely on my list. I've bought the pattern. The night shift shawl and the shift shawl. So three, three patterns. They all use spin cycle yarns. I'm really, really lucky to have one skein of spin cycle yarns in my collection because of my lovely fiber share partner uh, from two years ago. I believe her name was Sarah. I believe her name was Sarah. Yeah. Um, so she sent me one of those and because she lives very close to, to them. But, of course, you can use hand spun for all of those patterns because the thing is that you need a yarn that is toothy, I mean like lumpy or uneven or like marled um, and that changes color. So hand spun would be amazing for that. Thing is, I don't have a lot of hand spun, so, and I think I will just continue to use them for this blanket. Uh, yeah, but I definitely want to knit the shifty sweater this year. If I had a Meg 9, the shifty would be on it. Yeah, so that is whip number 15, 14, and whip number 15 I can't show you, and I won't show you. <laughs> um, yeah, you will see that in time. It's going to be awesome. I can tell you that. Whew. I know this episode is getting kind of long, but I wanted to do this simply because I wanted to show all of my whips because I know that I feel really happy when other people show that they have a mountain of whips. So I don't feel bad about having so many whips. So that's basically why I'm doing this and also as a motivation for myself and kind of as a, you know, start of the year, okay, what do I have, what do I want to work on, kind of thing. So I know that the uh, summer top, I'm going to frog that one and also the log cabin rug, I'm going to frog that one. The rest of them I aim to finish. The Christmas tree socks, hopefully this year. Yeah, and the pink sweater and the no frill sweater. Yeah, and a lot of them I probably will finish this year because um, I know how many things I finished last year. I mean, I don't want to, this to turn into a competition like, oh, I can finish that many things this year. But um, yeah, because I, I, do, I do get a lot of knitting done. I use every opportunity I have to knit. I take my knitting to work. I take my knitting with me in the car because usually I don't have to drive. Um, I knit watching movies because I'm teaching myself to knit blind. I'm suddenly holding a pen. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
I think I can finish a lot of them this year. And I think it will be fun that at the at the end of the year that I look back at this list and see how many I have finished. So I I will do that. At the end of the year I will look back and see how many I have finished. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time for me to visit the bakery because they might be closing already and I need to buy some bread. <laughs> because I'm still holding a pen again. Because I don't know if I've told you or if you've seen on my Instagram, but I've bought some cotton bread bags uh, so that I can be buy bread from the bakery where uh, they don't necessarily put put them in plastic bags. You can bring your own bag. Uh, so just to reduce plastic use. And I've been really into that lately. And um, I'm even, you know, buying shampoo bars that I'm that are made here in the Netherlands. I am uh, buying um, cloth. Well, I, I had cloth, but I bought beeswax to make beeswax cloth to wrap my sandwiches in so I don't have to use any plastic bags. Uh, I bought uh, a glass jar of uh, coconut oil and charcoal toothpaste. I bought bamboo toothbrushes. Like, I am going... I am... I want to reduce plastic use and I want to be more sustainable and I want to support small businesses and all of that. So, yeah. So my recommendations... Yes, I wanted to leave with some recommendations this week. My recommendations for Dutch, Dutch folk are levenzondagafval.com which is a zero waste web shop. Uh, you can get all of the things I just mentioned, you can get them all there. And I love it. Seriously. Just check it out, levenzondeafval.com. They also have an Instagram handle by the same name. Uh, and another recommendation, so I have some pod... <laughs> suddenly holding this pen again. I have some podcast episode, uh, I'm podcast recommendations. One is the Quirky Monday Craft Cast by Kalisha. I have been watching a couple of her episodes and she is just delightful. She is so bubbly and I love her dogs. Um, yeah, I love that she sits outside. Um, and yeah, go check her out. Kalisha, uh, she is Nadi Tarani or Nadira Tani. I always get it mixed up on Instagram. And Quirky Monday Craftcast here on YouTube. And the second podcast recommendation is Denise uh, from Earth Tones Girl, who also have a, has a podcast. I just watched my first episode this morning, uh, which was her very uh, last episode. I mean, her most recent episode. And uh, she is so warm and... I don't know. I just feel happy watching her podcast. She has this very calming effect and I really like that. Um, I like soothing podcasts such as Little Bobbins or uh, Cherry Heart podcast or uh, Nicole the Gentle Knitter podcast uh, or the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. I love those podcasts. Just soothing and... Just nice, just nice. Go check her out, Denise, Earth Tones Girl. And another kind of podcast recommendation, uh, but she doesn't, well, she does do podcasts, but uh, she does uh, Instagram and Facebook lives, live videos. Um, and on Facebook, she can save them to your Facebook page. So uh, usually I start my Thursday just watching a couple of her videos from that past week because she does a couple of videos a week and just short ones you know just 10 minutes but whew, it's so inspirational uh she is a business coach her name is ray dodd actually rachel but don't call her that just ray dodd uh i have come across her profile uh because i'm following cat golden on instagram and Kat Golden is being coached by Ray Dodd and she said it made a huge impact on her business. Uh, you know, just planning wise, money wise, she made a huge impact. And um, 
I am intrigued and and inspired and I just want to follow everything this woman does and Ray is um, she has a new course coming up um, or a, is it a challenge it's it's I think it's the money challenge starting uh, February 11th so I'm definitely gonna check that out she has a newsletter she has a Facebook group so uh, and an Instagram channel so just check her out if you have a business um, because she might do some serious um, changes to your business uh, yeah I mean I haven't booked a course with her yet I'm just you know carefully watching uh, just watching her live videos and yeah but I'm thinking I might want to get in on one of her courses and uh, jumpstart my business uh, I think that would be really exciting uh, yeah so those were my recommendations for this week and I have to I have to um, end this episode because I only have eight minutes of space left on my card <laughs> so yes uh, check out the giveaway thread in my Ravelry group tell me how many whips you have in the comments section check out Kalisha and Denise's podcasts check out Ray Dot and have a very crafty couple of weeks and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!